guys, welcome back to Girls of Innocence slash Uncaged Learning. If you guys do not know by now, Uncaged Learning is the name of our school, Uncaged Learning Academy. That's the name of our homeschool. So there's that. If you guys see that on the end of my videos, if you guys have even paid attention to that, that's what that is. So I'm back with another homeschooling video. I have had people ask me, how easy is it to homeschool where you are? Now we live in Georgia, pretty much Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. The state of Georgia, I believe, is very lenient on homeschooling, and I'm very glad for that. That's one thing I do like about Georgia. I can't say that I'm, that I'm in love with Georgia anymore. I can't say I'm in love with Atlanta. We, I've been here since I was 10, so I'm just, I'm just here, <laughs> you know. But the homeschooling laws are very lenient, and I'm very happy. I'm extremely happy that the homeschool laws here in Georgia are very lenient. There are some other states that are even more lenient, like I believe Texas, I think Texas, that's just one of them. There are a couple of others that are very lenient. Texas is even more lenient than Georgia because from what I hear about Texas, you don't even have to test your child like hardly at all. I mean, I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. If you want to know, you should go research, but I believe that is the case. Like, you don't really have to worry about testing your child. Any kind of state test, standardized test, you don't have to worry about it. Now, here in Georgia... The rules for that are, you don't have to do attendance anymore. I remember my mother-in-law, she told me when she was homeschooling her sons, she had to do, she had to turn in attendance, like she had to, I don't know how exactly she did it, but Georgia, the state of Georgia required you to take attendance for your kids, which to me doesn't make any damn sense, because if you're homeschooling, they're going to be there, I mean, come on, duh, and even if you're not there, you can always lie about them being there because they're home. If you know what I mean. I find that kind of weird, but whatever. She said she had to take attendance or keep keep an attendance to um, turn it into the year. Whatever. That's what used to happen. I'm so glad they stopped doing it. They stopped doing that a few years ago. Maybe not a few years. Probably a few years ago. Because Soraya was already born. Soraya was a baby. We've been homeschooling since she was a baby. Pretty much since birth. We've homeschooled all our kids since birth. And I believe by the time Soraya was of age to even be considered in school, like six, age six, um, they had stopped the attendance thing, which is great because who feels like taking attendance when you know your child is right there, they're right next to you. So, like I said, Georgia's very lenient. As far as testing here in Georgia, they're also very lenient with that. The only times you have to test your child, you have to have your child take a state test or some kind of standardized test at all is um, third grade, sixth grade, ninth grade, and pretty much twelfth grade to, to graduate, if you know what I mean. But even twelfth grade, um, you can take your GED. Technically, you can take your GED, I believe, if you're, um, I think if you're age 16 and over, you can technically take your GED already. So, there you go. That's how Georgia works. Third grade, sixth grade, ninth grade, and then 12th grade. It's pretty much how you, how you get out of school, how you graduate, how you move on. But we all know we don't have to go all the way to 12th grade in order to get out. I mean, my husband, he was homeschooled for his high school years. I think like his last two high school years. And he graduated in 10th grade. At a 10th grade level, he graduated. He, got, he, was, he um, aced his GED and he went on to, what was he doing? He just went to go work. He, was, he had a job then prior to going to college. He just worked for a little while and then went to college. So, you don't have to wait until 12th grade to take your GED, theoretically. You, you really don't have to. I believe you can take it at a certain age. I think it's 15 or 16. I don't remember. Don't quote me on that. Do your own research. But you don't have to wait until then. Technically, you don't. And I don't plan for my kids to wait these long, drawn-out years because, as you know, in public school, they keep in school a too, little too long, you know. They give you a bunch of unnecessary classes, unnecessary things to learn that you don't really need. All you need is the basics. So I'm glad that Georgia gives you lots of leeway with that. As far as testing, you can take the GED when you need to take it at whatever required age they give you. And your child doesn't have to take any form of state test until third grade. Now that's good because this year Soraya is in third grade. She's heading to fourth. She's a rising fourth grader. So she's leaving third, she's going to fourth. So this is the first year she has to take the, her first state test. And I was a little intimidated, you know. Um, I'm still a little intimidated for her to fully take it. Now we've ordered it already and the test came. It came already in the mail. I had to do a lot of research 
on which test because there were a couple of them. I believe there were like two or three options that I could have chosen. But the one I chose was the Hewitt homeschooling one and that one was the best one for us. It was the best fit for, for what I wanted in the test and how it was, you know, designated. The fact that you don't have to have a degree in order for your child. You don't have to have a degree in order to supervise your child taking that test. You know what I mean? So some, some tests are like that. It's like, oh, you can order it and you can, you know, help them take it, but you must have a degree, which I think is kind of ludicrous because how would they even know if you had a degree unless they want you to upload that type of information before you order a test, which is still kind of bizarre, but whatever. More than likely, if you're homeschooling, you have some brains, you know, you, you're not dumb. <laughs> but anyway, that's how, that's how Georgia is. They're really lenient. So, like I said, Soraya's in third grade now. She's heading to fourth. So this is her first year of taking the state test, and so far the test, it doesn't look too bad, but you know, I'll be supervising her. Um, I might um, have her come up here and do a video, see how she feels about it. We'll be working on that test all this week. I'm not sure when it's going to get complete, but they let you keep it for a month, so it's pretty lenient. You can supervise the child, don't give them the answers, but you supervise what's going on. It's like a Scantron. And you just sit there and the child goes at their own pace. There's three sections, reading, math, and language arts in that Hewitt homeschooling test. And that's that's it. That's all, that's all you have to work on. No science, no social studies, no history, none of that. You don't even have to worry about that. Your child needs to know the basics. Reading, math, and language arts. It's pretty much the basics for all life, period. If you don't know any of those, you're just going to flunk out of life. Let's be honest. So... That's our ideal. So that's our current ordeal with Georgia's homeschooling laws and testing and all of that. So I will be um, coming back and showing you guys what the test looks like and what it entails and everything else. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe and make sure you like. Y'all have not been liking my videos. Yeah, I'm talking about you. Thank you for watching. Peace out.